What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Programmies and welcome back to this series on Python. In the last video, we learned about the if statement to create programs that can make decisions. In this video, we will learn about the while loop. A loop is a fundamental concept in all programming languages, not just Python. They are used to repeat a block of code multiple times as per our requirement. This allows us to create some interesting programs as you'll see in this video. So let's get started. Before we write the actual code of the while loop, let's take a look at its syntax. A while loop starts with the keyword while followed by a test condition followed by a colon. Then we write the body of the loop in the next lines. Notice the spaces before the body of the loop. This indentation is important as it indicates the body of the loop. Here's how this pseudocode works. Python checks this condition which is a boolean expression that evaluates to either true or false. If it's true, the body of the while loop is executed. At this point, it's similar to the if statement. However, unlike an if statement that checks the test condition only once, after executing the body of the loop, it checks the test condition again. This process goes on and on until the test condition evaluates to false. If the test condition is never false, the loop runs forever until the system's memory runs out. Let me give you an example. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say count equals zero. Then I'll say while count less than five, print I am inside a loop. Let me add one more statement and say print looping is interesting. Let me run this program and as you can see, these two print statements are executed again and again and again. Let's analyze what this program is doing. Here, count equals zero. In this line, count less than five or zero less than five is true. That is why these two statements are executed. Now, since this is the while loop, it will again check the test condition. Again, count or which is zero less than five is true. And again, these statements are executed. This happens again and again and the condition count less than 5 is never false. So the loop runs forever. This is known as an infinite loop. However, most of the time, rather than running a loop forever and ever, we want loops to end at some point. Let's say we want this loop to run only 5 times. We can do that by adding one statement inside this loop so that this test condition count less than five is false after running five times. At the end of the loop, I'll add one statement count equals count plus one. Here, we have increased the count variable by one in each iteration of the loop. Now let's see from the start how the program works. Initially, the count variable is zero. That's why count less than 5 or 0 less than 5 is true and the body of the while loop is executed. If you've noticed, this new line that we have added is incrementing the value of count by 1. Since its initial value was 0, its new value is 1. Now the while loop checks the condition again. This time count less than 5 or 1 less than 5 is again true and again the body of the loop is executed. But this time since the value of count was 1, its new value is 2. Basically, this line count equals count plus 1 is increasing the value of count in each iteration of the loop from count equals 0 to count equals 4, which is 5 times. After the 5 runs, the count variable is increased from 4 to 5. Only then the test condition count less than 5 or 5 less than 5 is false. Let me press the run button and show you. So when I press the run button, this time I am inside a loop and looping is interesting is printed only five times. Let me change this program a bit. I will remove these two print statements and instead I'll print the count variable inside the for loop so that we can better understand what's happening. Now when I press the run button, as you can see the value of count was zero and it went up to one, two, three, four and five. And when count was five, it was this condition was false and the loop exited. 
Now let me modify this program again. I will change count to 5 and I'll change this test condition to count less than equal to 10. Can you guess the output of this program without running it? I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause the video. You can find the answer to this program in our GitHub repository. The link will be in the video description. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. Now let's try one more example of the while loop. We will print the multiplication table of a number that is entered by the user from 1 to 10. To write this program, we need to create a loop that runs 10 times from 1 to 10. Let's do that first. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say number equals int and then I'll take an input, enter a number, then I'll say count equals 1 while count less than equals 10 count equals count plus 1. Let me run this code and it says enter a number when I enter 6 nothing really gets printed. This is because I have not printed anything inside the while loop. However, this program is still doing something useful. It is taking the variable count and increasing it from 1 to 10 in each iteration of the while loop because of the statement count equals count plus 1. Now in each iteration of the loop, we need to print the row of the multiplication table. I will do that by adding a few lines. So here I'll say product equals number times count and then I'll say print product. We have computed the product by multiplying number by count and in line 6 we have printed the product by using the print statement. Let me run this program. When I run it then it says enter a number and when I enter something like 6 we can see that the output shows the result when 6 is multiplied by numbers from 1 to 10. Let's make that a bit more readable. Here instead of print product, I'll say print number times count equals product. Let me press the run button and it says enter a number, I'll enter something like 6 and when I press enter, then it shows the multiplication table in nicely formatted manner. This is because as we have seen in the previous video, the print function takes whatever is in between the commas and prints them with spaces in between. As you can see from this example, you can write pretty awesome programs using loops. The syntax of the while loop is pretty easy. However, the important part is the logic and how you use it. And how do you get good at logic? One word, practice. So here's a task for you to practice. Can you modify our multiplication table program so that you get a multiplication table from 10 to 1 instead of 1 to 10. You have to modify the same program that I have written here and you can see the expected output on the screen. You will find the answer to this question in our GitHub repository. Also visit our website programmings.com for more information on while loop with examples. I posted the links in the description below. By the way, if we know that our loop iterates for a certain number of times like 5 times or 10 times in our examples, it's easier and better to use the for loop which we will learn about in the next video. Before we wrap up this video, let's recap some of the concepts we have learned. Loops are used in programming to repeat a block of code. The while loop runs continuously until the test condition is false. If the test condition of the loop is never false, the loop runs infinitely until the memory is full. This is known as an infinite loop. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you are just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I posted the links in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. In the next video, we will learn about the Python for loop which is used to iterate through a sequence. Join me in this video series. 
and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!